Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about logging Salesforce cases using Power Virtual Agents and Power Automate. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this content and why I feel it is important. So naturally I'm a big fan of Dynamics 365. I have used it in previous projects and I've also used Salesforce as well. And the reality is that Salesforce is still a popular customer relationship management system and perhaps more uh, when you look at their holistic platform. So it is popular and people still have needs in order to automate conversations with Salesforce and to be able to do things like account lookups, creating accounts, creating cases and those sorts of activities. And so the, the goal of any conversational bot shouldn't just be around going ahead and logging a case or logging a ticket. Because what that means is you still have work on the back end of that. Like the goal of any conversational bot should really be around how do you deflect creating those cases? How can you provide some sort of self-service experience where a customer can actually solve the problem that they're trying to, to achieve all on their own? But the reality is, is that it's not always gonna be the case. And when that does happen, you do wanna be able to log that in a tool like Dynamics 365 where they also have case support. But Salesforce, as I mentioned, is very popular and it is a popular use case that we should be aware of as well. And lastly, with Power Automate and the over 300 connectors that are available out of the box, creating a Power Virtual Agent experience that allows you to talk to Salesforce is actually not that bad. And what I'm going to do is walk you through how you go ahead and build that out today in this episode. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. The scenario that I wanna walk you through is one in which we've got a customer that is using some sort of online service and they have detected through an email notification that someone has been accessing their account. And so what they want to do is, is reach out to the e-commerce provider, log a ticket and get someone to investigate what is the situation. Now in order for us to be able to facilitate this uh, within our chatbot experience, we need that customer to provide, to provide their email address and their description. What we'll do with that is we will subsequently look them up inside of Salesforce to essentially get their ID, like their system ID, so that we can then go ahead and log a case against their account. And then what we will do is pass that case number back to them using Power Virtual Agents. Now naturally this is all powered through Power Automate on the back end where it's gonna do that lifting for us and do that connectivity with Salesforce and then we'll be able to return that response back to the bot and display that to the user. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and let's see this in action. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the demo. And then what I will do is then jump into Power Automate and show you exactly how that flow was created. All right, so I'm going to start the conversation as a customer indicating that I think someone has accessed my account. And now we can see that my topic has lit up and we are going to navigate down the unrecognized login topic. So I'm being asked to provide my email address, which I will go ahead and do. And then I'm just getting prompted. It's saying like, you've indicated that you've got an unrecognized login to your account, is this correct? Just want to confirm that. And then it provided a description of my issue. So I'm going to say that I have received an email indicating that my account was accessed from another country. 
And then I'm being asked, like, have I shared my credentials with anyone else? And in this case, I'm going to say, no, I have not. And now what's going to happen is we're going to fire up that flow, that Power Automate flow, and do all of that exchange with Salesforce. And as you can see, our process has been complete, uh, where we have been able to retrieve a or create a case inside of Salesforce and then retrieve the case number, which I now have for my own reference. And then also a message indicating that a customer service rep will be following up with me shortly. So let's go and flip and take a look at the flow and, and just see how we go ahead and make that. So the first thing that we do is uh, we have a trigger. We're gonna use Power Virtual Agents trigger and we are going to expose three different attributes. One is the email address, one is the description, and then also we wanted to know if that account has been shared because obviously that's gonna be some useful information for our agent. Now what I've done here is I have created a variable and it's of type string and this is going to represent my message response. So whether or not we have success or a failure, we are going to update this variable and then send that message back to Power Virtual Agents at the end of our flow. I'm going to include uh, a scope which is uh, just good air handling hygiene and so I'm going to try these specific activities and in the event that they're successful, life's good, no problem. Um, in the event that we have a failure, we're gonna go ahead and catch that exception and then update our, our response message just indicating that an error has occurred, please try again. Now, when it comes to Salesforce, what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and, and make sure that we are going to log a case, but refer it back to a specific account. Now, this could be an account, this could be a contact. I think it really depends on how you've set up your business and, and how you choose to model your different uh, corporate entities. Uh, for like a, a business to consumer model, you might use the account you know, to represent an individual user. Um, however, obviously if you're dealing with a larger company or doing business to business, the account is likely gonna to refer to the account, to the corporate entity, but it's really up to you. And all I'm gonna do is I, I do have a field here that I've used for something previously, this Salesforce instance, where I have an email address and I'm gonna go ahead and basically query the account information for that email address. And this will allow me to get the system reference for that account. And that becomes important when I go ahead and create a case because I wanna be able to link a case to a specific account. Um, so that whenever we go ahead and, and try to look up that account, we can see all of the related cases. Uh, for and this becomes really important when you have, say, an escalation and someone's like, your service is, is no good. And you're like, well, like, have you had any issues before? So you wanna be able to be able to go to that account and then see any related cases. And that's where we're gonna go ahead and use this account ID. This is actually gonna come from our response that uh, when we're trying to get the details for the account. Now we're just gonna include additional information, right? Some of this is static in terms of where the case was or like originated, but we're also gonna provide that description. Um, is this a shared account? Then here's the description. We're gonna capture the email address, the account name from our call previously. So we can just get more details about that account and include it inside of the case itself. Once that case has been created, we're gonna go ahead and just return that case number as part of our response message that we return back to our customer. And, and do note that when we talk about the Salesforce object type here, we are talking about cases versus when we try to get information about the account, it's going to be the account object. And that's essentially it. So what happens is if we have a successful transaction, our try scope will complete. We will set this variable. Um, which is going to represent a positive response. Um, when we have a catch here, what we're doing is we're going to look at the configure run after settings. And if something has failed in the prior step, we're then going to catch that and generate our own message and set it to that same flow response variable. And then here we're simply going to return that flow response back to the Power Virtual Agent conversation. Now, one more thing that I'm sure you're gonna be interested in is actually seeing the case itself. So we saw as part of that Power Virtual Agent conversation that a case that ended in 1032 was created for us. We can actually head over to Salesforce, we can look on the top ribbon here and see all of the different entities. In this case, we're interested in cases, so we can go ahead and click on 1032. 
Now, what uh, we will find here is that this is the information that was created from Power Automate, and that we can also see like other information that the account name was properly injected, and then we also have in other uh, details such as the email, the email address, the status of being new, and the medium priority, and then where the case originated. So that's how that experience looked. That concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I thought it was uh, interesting to integrate with some non-Microsoft technologies because obviously the, the world is big and every organization is unique, and as, as, as prevalent as Microsoft is, there's going to be scenarios where you need to connect Microsoft tools with other organizations' tools, and uh, I wanted to show you an example of that. Uh, do look for another video coming up on Thursday. We are going to talk about trigger expressions, so I would encourage you to check that out. And also, if you're not following me on Twitter, please go ahead and find me with the handle of at Weirzy. Obviously, you're on my YouTube channel. I really appreciate that. It would be great if you could go ahead and like and subscribe. And that's it for today's episode, and we'll catch you soon on the channel. Take care.